Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to be talking about how you can easily retime your animations in Cinema 4D using the Cinema 4D equivalent of After Effects time remapping. So let's check it out. So here's our busy little bee that I animated here and let's just say that a client was like, you know what, I love this. All I want to do though is kind of retime this. And typically, I'm sure on the client end, they think like, oh, that's really, really easy. But as animators, we know, and especially when you have way more complex animations like this, you're putting on the hot slick keyframe action. You're really finessing those keyframes. You're getting them perfect. And that takes some time. So when a client says, you know what, I want to retime things, that kind of puts a huge wrench in your plans because what they might think is really simple is actually kind of hard. And what that would actually require you to do is go in and change all of those keyframes that you spend so much time perfecting. Just like in After Effects where you spend a lot of time meticulously pushing keyframes, moving and grooving around in your timeline, uh, you can just use a time remapping after you pre-comp an animation. Now, there's something very similar in Cinema 4D called Time Tracks, which I'll be introducing right now. So basically what Time Tracks allow you to do, if you click on any track here, you'll see that there's a time track kind of sitting here. And I'm sure that when you've been animating, you probably never even noticed what the heck this was or that this even existed, this little time track area down here. But basically what this time track allows you to do if you add a time track into say our position, it allows you to use another track, another animation track to control all of the keyframes we have on whatever tracks that you assign a time track to. So that's kind of the first step is we need to assign an overall time track that is going to then control all of my animation tracks that I have in my scene. So this is kind of like pre-comping down all of your animation tracks in a way. So what I'm gonna do is just add a null and this is just gonna be like a dummy null that I'm gonna add the time track to. So let's just rename this B retime and then to have this null show up in our timeline so we can add a time track to it we're just gonna go ahead and just set a keyframe in the visibility for ed editor, just for the heck of it, just so this actually shows up in our timeline here. So what I'm gonna do on this B retime null, I'm gonna right click, go to add special tracks. We're gonna add a very special track here called a time track. And then what you're gonna see is that this adds a new animation track and it's currently set, uh, if we go here and just set this to linear, uh, we have a linear time track that you can basically think of as a percentage of the animation's completion from zero to basically 100% here. And you can actually see this represented as 0% and 100% as you can see that key value. So this is a really good way to inject that time remapping fu uh, functionality from After Effects into Cinema 4D using these time tracks. So what I can do is double click on this track and, and just rename this B time. Uh, B retime here, just so if you have multiple uh, tracks, this will work. And the most important thing with how a time track works is you need keyframed information, okay? So if you just have a simulated animation uh, that has no keyframe, say like a jiggle deformer, any animation that comes from a jiggle deformer or a random effect or anything like that, what you need to do is go ahead and bake down all of that information there okay so that's kind of important you bake everything down to point level animation and then you'll have keyframes that you can then retime using uh, the retime track here so now once we have this retime track basically we can delete this visibility and editor because we have this new track here i just need to go ahead and select all of the animation tracks and make sure you got them all and go in here and just simply drag and drop that time track that we just created into this little time track field that we have here, okay? So now, if I go and hit play, you can see that this animation should play as normal. But if I stop my animation right about here, where I want this to slow down and just hold command and click to create a new keyframe here, and then maybe just see where this is going to uh, begin the speed up again. So this is where it's gonna slow down and then I'll command click, set a new keyframe where this will actually speed up. And then basically just to stretch out the keyframe or uh, stretch out the timing, I'm just gonna select these 
last two keyframes and just move them out. So we're gonna have a lot more time and space between these two keyframes and the animation that's happening in between those two keyframes here as you can see. And then all I need to do is basically retime my animation, make it a little bit longer, say to frame 170. So we added like an extra second or so between those two keyframes here. Let me just shrink this on down. And let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So we have our B and you can see we're going into the time remapped part where we spaced out those two keyframes. We can maybe even make this a little bit more pronounced. Maybe make this animation 180 keyframes and just bring that on out. And you can see this nice little slowdown we have going on there. As we go into the time remap bit, we can go in here and maybe go and say, you know, easy ease, ease these suckers out to make everything a little bit more smooth. And I'm just going to remove uh, the smoothing from the first frame and the last frame to maintain that initial speed. Go into my F-curve mode and just really smooth this out here. So maybe something like that. And you can tweak this to your heart's content, but there we go. If I hit play, you can see that we have this nice time track. There's the first keyframe, there's the second keyframe. And again, having that time track allows for a lot of flexibility because the greatest part is, is that all of those initial keyframes that amazing keyframe job that you did, uh, the meticulous laying of those keyframes and, and s making them really slick and smooth and the animation really nice, that's all intact. And you basically just retime the entire animation using this entire, this, this new time track that we have here, which is really such a huge time saver, especially when you, you are working on these animations, spending a lot of time on them, and you know when the client thinks that it's actually an easy fix with the new time tracked uh, workflow that I in just introduced to you, it actually is an easy thing. So your client's right for once, right? So have fun with this. Remember that you can have multiple time tracks to control and retime different parts of your animation. So that's kind of why I renamed that one uh, retime track to be retime because you can have multiple. Uh, time tracks for whatever you want to retime in your animation. So go nuts and have fun retiming animations the super, super easy way with time tracks. So there you go, time tracks, super useful aspect of Cinema 4D that I don't really know that many people who actually even know about them. So hopefully this helps you out in your workflow. If you have any questions about time tracks or anything I covered in this tutorial, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you like this tutorial, hit the like button. If you like what I'm doing here on my channel, please hit the subscribe and be sure to click on that little bell so you get alerted by the little dingy bell each time I upload a new tutorial. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See ya.